Hi, welcome to the next in our series looking at the minor prophets. And today we're going to be looking at um, the prophet Joel, the book of Joel. Now it is only three chapters, so perhaps if you haven't had an opportunity to read through beforehand, either as a group or individually, then I just want to encourage you to maybe just pause now and, and have a little quick read through. Just familiarise yourself with the book, even if you're not fully sure what's going on. It'll just help you maybe when I make references to things um, to know where that's coming from. Now, the book of Joel is actually quite well known amongst many Christians because Peter famously quotes a passage from Joel's prophecy um, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit falls upon the apostles, the disciples, and um, in amazing ways. And Peter kind of uses this passage, this prophecy of Joel, and quotes it to the people, in effect saying, hey guys, what is happening to us right now was prophesied by Joel and is being fulfilled right here in this very moment. But that prophecy of the Holy Spirit that Peter quotes and that Joel wrote all those years before is not all that Joel packs into these three chapters. Now the main theme of Joel that's quite important for us just to highlight is the theme of repentance. God calling the people of God to repent of their sins. Now actually if you're reading any of the minor prophets and I would suggest majority of the Bible then this is a really important theme for us, the theme of repentance. This idea of us turning away from our sin but also turning towards, back towards God. You see, in the Old Testament, and in particular in the Minor Prophets, this is a key theme because so often the people of God have broken their covenant with Yahweh, with God. And Yahweh says, therefore, that there will be consequences. In fact, if we go back to the book of Deuteronomy, when the people of God, Israel, are in the wilderness after escaping Egypt and slavery in Egypt, and they're making their way through the wilderness, and as they're preparing to enter the Promised Land, Moses reiterates really the covenant of God but in there are some clauses some conditions where Moses warns the people God warns the people that if they are to break the covenant there will be consequences and one of the consequences of their disobedience is actually locusts and drought now I mention that because if you've read through the book of Joel or if you you've ever heard of it before you may know that he makes reference to a swarm a plague of locusts upon the land But even though the people of God have sinned and have turned from God, have broken the covenant, all is not lost. There is hope for the future. And this is what Joel speaks into. He says, if the people would repent, then God will restore them and promises them an even better future than their perhaps what they consider glorious past. Jesus himself picks up on the theme of repentance. And this is where we begin to see this theme threaded throughout the whole of the Bible and its importance and relevance for us too. For when Jesus came and preached the kingdom of God, he would say, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, follow me. But back to Joel. The main theme is repentance, but what else does Joel say? Well, as I said, there's three chapters, just to break those down slightly now. Firstly, in chapter one, Joel speaks into a, a very real life circumstance that's taking place, a plague of locusts, a literal plague of locusts that would were sweeping the land, destroying everything in their sights. And Joel uses this plague, this swarm of locusts, to say, hey, these, these locusts are attacking our land, eating our stuff, and therefore there's obviously a need for us to nationally repent and pray because of the severity of the plague. Then into chapter two, Joel kind of takes this metaphor of the locusts as a plague sweeping across the land, and he applies it to a greater army a greater swarm that was to come pointing towards an army now there's different um, kind of interpretations of what this army might be is it the army of the lord at the final judgment or um, is it an, a physical army and i think most commentators would agree that it's pointing to the babylonian army see joel is writing into judah the southern kingdom the northern kingdom has already been broken up and m- many of them taken into exile but the southern kingdom is still there but is about to be invaded by the Babylonian army who will take them into exile as well. And so Joel prophesies into that and calls the people as a result of the very real plague they can see of locusts and the impending kind of doom of this army of this empire about to invade. And Joel says the only response that we can make is to repent. 
And then at the end of chapter two, there's this third scene of, from verse 18 onwards where um, we hear a little bit of God's response, where God promises restoration and where he promises the new age of the spirit, when the Holy Spirit will come following that repentance. You see, one of the things we find in scripture is that so often revival follows repentance. See, many of us in the Christian world, if you've been around church for really any time at all, you might have heard this word revival. It's this sense of God moving in power and impacting people's lives and doing amazing things with them through the work of the Holy Spirit. People being healed, restored, all of these amazing things. But actually, if we see in scripture so often, revival does not just happen in a vacuum, but revival follows repentance. This is why repentance is so important for us to grab a hold of it and a really important theme for us to pick up, not just in the minor prophets, but in the whole of the Bible. Then moving on to chapter three, we read of judgment upon the nations, this great big battle where God ultimately will be victorious and God will bless his people, especially um, and particularly those who have repented. Now, books like Joel's may be hard because we perhaps can't relate or we're not in those circumstances of the locusts and the armies impending in, in and some of the language might seem a little bit alien to us. But as I said earlier with that main theme of repentance, it's still relevant for us today. And there's other themes too. And I just want to go through some of those and say some of the key things about them. Firstly, repentance itself. See, here we learn that Yahweh chastens those he loves. That the New Testament writers pick up on this and talk about Jesus and, and God disciplining the ones that they love. God calls us to repent, not because he wants us just to be good and perfect children, but because he wants what is best for us. And that can only happen if we turn from our bad, evil ways and we turn back to God and pursue his ways. The second theme just to pick up on in Joel's um, prophecy is that of judgment. See, judgment can seem very harsh, and particularly when we read Old Testament books, you could, if you, if you kind of are not careful, get this picture of quite a harsh God who judges and, and does horrible things in response to people's horrible things. But actually, if we look at some of the sins of the nations that are mentioned in Joel, God's judgment seems to make a whole lot more sense. For example, in Joel chapter 3, verse 3, it reads, They cast lots for my people and traded boys for prostitutes, they sold girls for wine to drink. When we consider those sins of the people and we look at the evil in the world around us and we consider the brokenness of humanity that we see so often in the news, but also perhaps in the lives of those not too far from us. I believe the idea that God will judge this world can actually bring comfort. This idea that God sees all of the wickedness and the evil in this world and he is not just going to let it happen and people go without facing the consequences of their actions. It may seem overwhelming to us, this wickedness and this evil, but we're told that God will deal with it. But he can also, we are promised in the New Testament, deal with our evil and our sin if we repent and allow the blood of Jesus, his death on the cross, to cover our sins and to heal us so that we'll be on the right side of judgment when it comes. Next, revival, the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the key theme um, within the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28 to 29 and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions even on the male and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit here Joel promises the Holy Spirit a promise that we see fulfilled in the book of Acts and continuing to be fulfilled right here today in our lives and in the life of the church. The prophecy of Joel has been realised and is available to us today. We can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And when we do, we're told that we can receive the Holy Spirit and we can walk forward um, with him the rest of our days. And then the last theme just to pick up on is this theme of restoration. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says this amazing verse when you consider chapter 1 and, and the beginning of chapter 2 and what's happened of this swarm of locusts going through the land and eating every crop before them and then this army coming and, and destroying and taking the people away. In chapter 2 verse 25 God says I will repay for the years the locusts have eaten. And God goes on to say both the little locusts and the great ones, both the, the very real locusts but also the army, the people that will come and destroy you. What a promise this is to the land of Judah. 
Judah who have sinned to such an extent, broken their covenant with God to such an extent that he's removed his blessing from them and they're now vulnerable to attack. That even though they broke the covenant, that God says, I will restore you. I will restore and repay the years that you have lost. I mean, this is a real comfort to us, especially when perhaps we've lost things in this life, when circumstances beyond our control have taken things from us. This is not how it should be. And the Bible promises us that Jesus will return and restore things, not just to how they could be, but how they should be, how they were designed to be, and so much more. For those of us who repent and follow Jesus, this promise continues to ring true that Jesus will restore to us all that we've lost, will restore to us all of those years that we've perhaps lost to hardship and to struggles in this life or the next. And so we can trust him. So there are those four themes, repentance, judgment, revival and restoration. And we've had that, that big overview of Joel, looking at the key theme being repentance, the key passage being Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 29. Now, in your groups, there's some questions based on those four themes of repentance, judgment, revival and restoration. And I hope that you find it really helpful. I hope that's helped give you a good picture of the book of Joel and that you enjoy discussing that together. God bless. Mm-hmm.